Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 170. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Enaba in the description down below. So it is time. We are back uh, and it is the 32 laps of Magello this time. Uh, we're in a B-class vehicle and I've chosen the BMW M coupe the z4 the bmw z4 i'm quite a fan of the z4 so i'm looking forward to driving it in this um it's going to be 32 laps around magello let's get cracking all right attempt number two yeah i'm not sure if caffeine is actually class as a drug but if it is then i'm a druggie <laughs> i drink a lot of caffeine now you got work to thank for that. What do you mean mech should vape? No. I ain't gonna vape. It's pointless. What does it achieve? Like, if I needed nicotine, sure. But I just prefer caffeine. It does the same job. <laughs> mech, you... You be one of those old guys in a full leather on a chopper motorcycle with a ciggy in a hand and a country western accent. <laughs> yeah. Addicted. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. That was so shit. I love it. Good. I vape Alex vapes, Mech's missing out. Godo's just secretly admitted that he's a homosexual. <laughs> I've been addicted for about a year and a bit now. Addiction! Right, so I, I do think for this race I'm going to have a bit of a challenge trying to keep the Ferrari behind. <laughs> Holy fuck! Took way too much curb there again. So, uh, for some reason, Tidal's not working with my uh, macro keyboard, so I can't skip songs. There we go, that's much better. I'm really into listening to Block Party at the moment. Um, I, I'm a huge fan of Block Party, to be perfectly honest. But the, the thing is, I'll go through phases where I want to listen to Block Party. Like, I'll sit for... I don't know. I'll listen to a lot of drum and bass. I'll go through rock phases and whatnot. And I won't listen to Block Party for about two months. But I can ca consistently come back to block party and be just properly into it blue raspberry damn wow chat chat's having a conversation about vaping lovely yeah, I've got Blue Raspberry Sneak up there, so I've got Blue Raspberry Energy Drink. I was actually this close to ordering another lot of Sneak, because I want Cherry Bomb and Sour Apple, and they're back in stock again. And I know they're going to go out very soon, so I want to grab some... And they're also doing breakfast orange for free as well. Wow. 
I'm tempted. But it's so expensive. I mean, it's, it's, an, it's more an investment when it comes to it. Because the amount of money that I was spending on Red Bulls... I mean, you think it's £2 a Red Bull. For one of those, it's about 80 pence. 70 pence, something like that. Once you factor in the amount that you buy. But it does take a huge chunk out of your bank account straight away. But I've, sa I've saved... Yeah, Red Bulls are about £2. If you buy the 500ml cans of Red... They're not even 500ml anymore. They're like 470 now. You buy one of those cans, it's about £2.50 in Tesco's. Yeah. But the difference is, I live further south. The further south you live, the more expensive stuff is. Um, so up north, it's a lot... Like, I've, everyone that I know that lives up north can get stuff a lot cheaper. Yeah, Coddo, you can get £1.25 cans of Monsters. Down south, they're about £1.40 for a can of Monster. Unless you buy them in bulk. And like... Nah. I'd be tempted to move up north. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm pretty much stuck in Swin... Like, I can't move anywhere. I'm stuck in Swindon. Until I get enough money that I can get a car. And then be able to find a place up north. And then also find a job up north. Yeah, and the fact that you have to go to B&M, which is known to be a cheaper store as well, to get a can for that price, it's still cheaper to get sneak and whatnot. So, but it, it's just so diff. The problem I think that sneak has that they need to get over because of the fact a tub is it's forty pound a tub. And you get 40 drinks out of it, which means it's a pound each. But obviously, you buy more tubs, you get discounts and whatnot. They need to find a way that to either get it in stores, um, or make it so that you can actually just buy, um, cans of it or whatnot. It's crazy. Specific flavor, only B and M. Oh yeah, I saw it in game. It's still the same price as it is on the website though, so it makes more sense to just buy it on the website. Hey, no worries, Pandy. Thank you so much for stopping by though. Hopefully you have enjoyed, and feel free to uh, drop a like as well on the stream, because that helps out greatly over on uh, YouTube now. I'm not 23. <laughs> and even then, uh, no, no. <laughs> Best type of flood. Oh my god. Pandy knows how to make any situation awkward. Pandy's superpower. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> mm, not quite, no. There's a lot of things I'd have to change to become that. Just 
just going to get a cupcake. Who eats cupcakes? They're literally designed for like four year old children. Anyone above that shouldn't be eating a cupcake. No. Cupcakes are. No. No. Get a slice of cake. You're supposed to have a. When you're an adult, you have a slice of cake. Oh. Oh, well, I'm not going to get the reference because I don't... I don't know. What do you do with your spare time, Kodo? Weirdo. <laughs> True crime stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, here's the thing, right? Um. So. <laughs> right. Mech, me, me, myself, and I, Mr. Lonely Man, decided, do you know what? Let's go have a look on uh, some dating sites. See what there is, right? There's obviously fuck all, so I couldn't be asked. But I'm also very concerned at the amount of women that are into, like, murder shows. Like, they'll put in their bios, like, I sit and watch true crime and what... It's a bit psychopathic, don't you think? A anyone that sits down and, like, actively wants to watch a show about murder... Like, I, I get stuff like NCIS and whatnot. That makes sense. Because it's an action show. Like, it's a detective program and whatnot. But people that actively sit there and want to watch, like, real stories about how some guy has just gone, snuck up behind someone and stabbed him. And then thinks that's good entertainment on... T no. Go... Do you know what? You need to be locked up. Key thrown away. They should use... They should use analytics, right, to work out what people are watching. And if you watch a lot of true crime, you should be instantly arrested. Like, instantly. No questions asked. Psycho as fuck. <laughs> Just can't see... Uh, sorry. Woo. It was a well needed cough. Yo, Heinz, what up? Are you winning, Mech? Yes. My car is super fast today. Uh, I also watch a lot of TV hijack and stuff. Also, Unsolved Mysteries and Computer Low. Yeah, see, one thing that I am quite enjoy at the moment watching about is old uh, computer hardware. I've got this obsession, obviously, with computer tech and whatnot, clearly. Um, 
Oh. I don't know what that is. I think it's a scam email, but it's also to do with PayPal, so I probably need to have a look at it. Oh yeah, I don't know if I told anyone on stream. I can't remember, but uh, I got banned from PayPal. It would have been my conversation point, I think, in the last stream. Um, but yeah, PayPal suspended my account. Because uh, they believe I was underage when I started it. Which I don't think I was because I started my Twitch in September 2020. Like, started pushing for affiliate and that's when I got affiliate. And then had to create the PayPal for the money to pay into. Which would have meant I would have been 18 at that time. However, there is that 1% chance that I may have done it before that. I don't think I did, which is why. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether it was because of me opening the Metro account and then them running a credit check that then PayPal was like, hmm, hang on, you're black, you're, you're banned, you're blacklisted. You're not allowed to use it. You know. So. So, I can't use paper. Slow. The super fast car got a super slow driver. Yes, 100%. Terrible driver. Too busy reading chat and conversating with chat. I should focus more on the racing. No. No. Definitely not. I want to chat with chat. Just make a new account. Like I, I know technically I can make a new account and it should be fine. But the problem is that all my bills came from that one account. I've already had multiple instances where PayPal have just been absolute dicks. Um, especially when it comes to like transact. I'm in the process of arguing a fraudulent transaction because I didn't get the products that were described on a payment. It was through eBay, and eBay didn't fucking do anything about it. So I went to fight with PayPal about it. PayPal's like, no, it can't do anything. So I'm now going through Visa, which Visa will do something about it, because let's be real, of course they will. Um... But yeah. Give me my PayPal account. I only use. Yeah, but I use PayPal as like a bills account. So. Or, oh no, Tidal's gonna cancel in a bit. Because obviously that came out. Basically, everything came out of PayPal. Um, anything to do with bills. And what I would do when I got paid into my main account, like my bank account, I would put aside whatever bills were coming out into my paper uh, and that way I could sort of manage it better now that I've lost that I've opened up a new account uh, with a different bank obviously so I'm going to have my money goes into my old account so it's still going to be exactly the same but I'm now going to have the bills coming out of my old account and then I'm going to use my new account for, like, spending. So if I buy, say, a game or if I'm... It, it's a spending account. So... Be right back, going to Tesco's. But yeah, I, I would have opened a new PayPal account if it wasn't for the fact that actually it it's just a pain in the ass anyways. Because I already have to move everything from PayPal to a new bank account anyways. I may as well just carry on that way, the way that I'm doing it. Oh yeah, I got to transfer Patreon as well. 
because I subscribe to Rocket Powered Mohawk on Patreon because he's the only creator that I've actually seen that has a Patreon that actually has a decent Patreon. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm supporting the small creators as well. He's not a small creator, but he's fucking hilarious. I have to go off slowly going back to the car and home. Hey, no worries, Hans. No worries. Hopefully we can see you again later, though, because we're going to be streaming for a long time today. By the way, for anyone watching, if you are enjoying the stream, feel free to drop it a like, because uh, if um, if YouTube sees that you like the stream, it will recommend it to more people. That's sort of how YouTube works now. Ever since uh, they did YouTube Shorts, and they sort of had to rely on the like button to send out shorts to more people um they've sort of copied that algorithm to the rest of youtube now so The one thing I wish that uh, YouTube Analytics showed was the like count, but it doesn't, which sucks. Where's this Ferrari? Oh my god, the Ferrari's miles behind me. I think I'm going to have to pit this time, by the way. Oh, this is a nice interior, actually. Oh, nice slide. Good slide there. Lovely double lads. And rev the arse off the car as well. Oh my gosh, I understand it. So yeah, I'm also uh, saving up now. So YouTube revenue is going to go straight towards um, getting a new capture card. So, because I want to get a 4K one. At the moment, I've got a 1080p capture card. But when it comes to Horizon 4, no, Horizon 1, sorry. I meant to say Motorsport 4. Motorsport 4 runs at 1080p. Um, but going from Motorsport 4 to Horizon 1, um, in that time period, I need to upgrade. Because Horizon 1, um, even though it's sort of a 1080p upscale, it still runs 4K on um, the Xbox One X. I'm also thinking of getting Series X before that time as well, hopefully. Um, because I want to get an Xbox Series X a console with more oomph and then also get in I mean there might be a new one coming 
Because obviously there's a Series S Black Edition now, which is like a terabyte instead of um, 512 gigs. But yeah, it would be nice to have a new Xbox. Is that Doom? Oh, that's r slash Doom. Fucking read it. Fuck off. So I'm on lap 12 and we're pretty much half a tank of fuel. It's not going to make us to the end of the race. So my plan is on lap 16, slap bang in the middle. We're going to double check and make sure the fuel is below halfway. Because if it's above halfway, then I'll limp it home. Obviously, if it's below halfway, we're making a pit stop. I could not care less. Whether... We might just make it. If it's... I mean, look at that. There's pretty much halfway now on the fuel meter. So, I, d I doubt by the time we get to lap 16, it's going to be there. And obviously, lap 16 is the midpoint for this race. So, entertain us. Hey, hey. It's quite crazy how long motorsport 3 is as a game like it's a long game and obviously motorsport 4 is even longer yes I know I took 6 months off but I, th I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to start making lots of content and then maybe through the month of August or even potentially for the last 4 months so September, October, November, December to post double videos a day to make sure that I can get back up on track to where I wanted to be. And especially with how much content's going to be in Motorsport 4 anyways, it's going to be it's going to be a long one. There we go, that's exactly the halfway mark on the fuel, which means we're going to be about six laps of fuel short, so... To go and fill up on lap 16 is not a bad idea. The fact that I've managed to one-handedly have a drink, that is pretty impressive. Especially as the fact that that had a lid. I'm driving and drinking. That's not a good idea. Don't follow my advice. <laughs> Very bad idea. 
What are you butter bing in? Computer, you shouldn't be butter bing in. Butter bing. Yeah, hopefully everyone's having a great day today. Hopefully you're all having a good day. And uh, if you are, feel free to chat in the chat. And if you are enjoying the stream, feel free to drop a like as well. As uh, every like does really help with the YouTube algorithm. Greatly appreciate it. Looking good. We've got another two laps to go after this one. Miguelo is another circuit that's been here since... Oh, no, it hasn't been here since Motorsport 1. Motorsport 2, I think, was when they added it. But Miguelo's obviously gone all the way through till 7. I'm really hoping that Motorsport 8 has a good um, track list. Because from my point of view, uh, I know a lot of people are skeptical about the career mode, but I think it actually looks quite good in Motorsport 7. It's got a very structured sort of, but good variation. Whereas, obviously, you look at Gran Turismo 7, everything's all over the place. There's no actual progression. It's just, oh, here's a race you can do. Here's a race you can do. Gran Turismo 7's progression. I have no idea who came up with the idea for Gran Turismo 7's progression. But it is quite possibly the worst progression of any Gran Turismo game at all. I'll be 100% honest, I think it is the worst of any Gran Turismo game. And let's be real, Gran Turismo 1? Pretty standard. Gran Turismo 2? Pretty standard. 3? Pretty standard. 4? Phenomenal. Because it was everywhere. 5 was meh. But... They were in championships. You had these set events that had certain criteria that you could do. Six was okay, actually. I think it was better than five because there was more variation. But it was very simple at the same time. It was very quick to progress. Seven, dreadful. It was so bad. It was unreal. And I, I think Gran Turismo 7 was an alright game in terms of the game feels but I, I saw a comparison the other day that Gran Turismo 7 is just GT Sport 2.0 it's just a slightly more enhanced version of Gran Turismo Sport that's got more cars more content more things to do but at the end of the day it's just like a just GT Sport and when I thought of that I was like shit it is and that sucks, because that proves that it's actually quite a bad game. Because no, GT Sport was alright as a test, but then it, if it, if Gran Turismo 7 feels similar to GT Sport, then doesn't that kind of prove that that's also a test as well then? And again, that's a, a huge, huge problem with Gran Turismo 7. I, I kind of want them to make Gran Turismo 8 in this PS5 life cycle so that we can have an actually good Gran Turismo game, but while they keep updating and adding cars, I don't think they will. But they've they've just got to make a standard progression model. 
the reason why a lot of games have a very similar way of doing progression is because it's the best model. It's the best way to do progression in video games. Because you know exactly what you've done, what you haven't done, and what you've got to do. And that's a key part of progression, is not just how you unlock cars and unlock new vehicles, but how you go about it. You, how you can see what you're doing, what you're going to do, and what you have done. That's also a key part of progression. If you can't see that or can't do that, which Gran Turismo 7, your progression is spread across like four different menus. You start your championship in the GT Cafe, and then it sent, tells you, oh yeah, now you've got to go to World Races, and then go to all these different menus in World Races to find the tracks for this championship. I, I don't want to go and find the tracks. It just makes it messy and horrible. And I get why they did it that way, because then they could have circuit experience and all that stuff in one menu. But then do circuit experience as part of like an arcade mode. You select arcade mode and it comes up with... You know, the tracks on the map. You pick the track and then, oh look, you've got quick race, you've got drift trial, you've got time trial and circuit experience that you can then do your lessons and learning how to get better at the track and obviously you get the credit rewards and etc etc obviously that's not the case with Gran Turismo 7 they could have quite easily then just done championships as they did in the other games in Gran they inspired it off of Gran Turismo 4, right? Said that that was going to be their inspiration because that was the one that people loved the most. And they made a progression so far away from Gran Turismo 4, it, it's jaw-dropping. Like, how could you mess it up so badly? That Maserati must be really fucking slow. The fact that a BMW can lap it, that's a slow car. It's a frog. It's just slow. I do quite like this BMW though. I really like this Beamer. Oh yeah, I said I was going to pit on lap 16 and I've just cracked on with it. I'm going to pit now. Pitting! I could give you a life. I could 
take it away. See, I've even got plenty of time that I can just pit and not worry about it because I'm so much quicker. And now I am in the lead and I don't have to worry. Why the fuck does a pit lane come out like that? That definitely is not FIA approved. That's for sure. <laughs> I not destroy to feel her underneath turning. She don't think straight. Bum, bum, bana, bana, bum, bum, bum. No, 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 she don't think straight. Oh, do you know what I haven't done? I need to schedule a video for today. I'll do that after this race. I forgot the other day, so I had to do like a double upload yesterday. Um, this is this is the problem with offering early access for people on um, what's it called? As like a channel member, I I love the idea of it, and I want to do it. I want to do it, but it, it has its hassles, and one of them is forgetting to actually upload the video in the end. <laughs> one thing that I would love for YouTube to add, and I've recommended this and sent like multiple like feedback reports and whatnot, for them to add where you can set it as member only until a certain date. So that way members can gain access to a video and then it can go public. And obviously you can set what tier that early access is as well. Because honestly, having the fact that YouTube offers like on their channel membership page, they they give options for like pre-made perks that you can pick. One of those pre-made perks is early access to videos, but they don't have a feature on YouTube that makes it easy to do early access for videos. Like you can set it as members only for a certain amount of time. Like, you can set it as members only, but then you have to manually change it to public. Which, again, isn't very easy to do when you're on a posting every day schedule. Sure, if you're like Mr. Beast, for example, where you post a video every week or whatnot, yeah, that makes sense. I'm not Mr. Beast. <laughs> So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this Forts of Mega series, complete all the games, finish it. Have I overtaken the same Maserati? Nah, that's... Oh yeah, that is the same one, because it overtook me when I did my pit stop, and then I re-overtook it. Madness. Yeah, so I think I'm going to, uh, what's it called? Do the Mega series, finish that. And then I'm going to start another mega series after. I'm not sure what game I'm going to do yet. I was thinking the WRC series. Because of the fact, 
WRC has different game modes throughout all of them. It's quite a cool looking game. And I know how to play it on controller. I've played all the games on controller and they're alright. But then I was thinking... I'm really enjoying Formula 1 at the moment. So why not do... A season... Only one season. But go through all the Formula 1 games that are out. I think that would be quite cool. And do like a full length race of every single game. I think it would be a great idea. We'll just have to wait and see. Hmm? Alright, give me a minute. Right, continuing. Again, sorry about that. Had to uh, sort some shit out. Bloody hell, this thing is quick. Oh yeah, I need to load up the uh, analytics tab again. There we go. Whoa! I've lost it. Uh, where's my mic? There we go. Okay. Right, let's carry on. <laughs> that was a terrible corner. But yeah, hopefully uh, nothing but cars. You're doing good today. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not too sure. I obviously really want to do... I don't know what I'm going to do next, so... Zeno, what up? How are you today? Hey, awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, um... Obviously, once... Falls is not going to be done for another two years. I don't think. I'm doing good, nothing but cars. Appreciate it, man. Good to hear that you're doing well. Um, yeah, Force is not going to be done for about two years, so it's obviously early days. But I was thinking, obviously, something a little bit shorter. If I was to sit and do all the Codemasters Formula One games, including 2009, that's going to be hell. But including 2009. Or, or, if I skip 2009, I start from 2010, and I do Mercedes Formula 1 team all throughout. Well, it could be Mercedes... Actually, I could do Red Bull and do 2009 as well. Because Red Bull's in 2009. So I could become Red Bull Formula 1 team and do an entire season in every single Formula 1 game. So I would do 2009... Do a season of that on full length races. 2010, do a season of that, full length races. 2011, 2012, etc. Et you get the, the image. And I do that on every single game. On. I'm going to say Xbox till F120. Well, I'll see what F1 games I can get on PC. Because at the moment, they're about 50 quid to buy all the ones that are delisted as, like, keys. So, I'd have to see if it's worth the investment. Because I'd only get about 20 videos out of each game if I do it that way. I'd get 20 videos and it would be long. So...
had a physics mock exam, which was easier than I expected. Physics is surprisingly easy, but it's... The problem with... Here's the thing. When it comes to a lot of stuff that's done in school nowadays... A, a lot of things are taught wrong in school. I'll be 100% honest. Obviously, I'm not a teacher, so I'm not a professional in any way. But I believe that everything is taught very wrong in school. Because when, when you look at things like English, English is about analysing text, right? That's fairly straightforward. If, if you can analyse text really well, I can do that fine. Uh, obviously, they teach you to invent these meanings behind what a, a writer could mean. And that's basically English. That's all they teach you. Back home and happy with a pizza. That is a good idea. Pizza makes everyone happy. But yeah, that's, that's all that the English language is when it comes to an English exam in the UK. They just teach you, oh yeah, can you invent some random meaning as to why this writer said the sky's blue? Yeah, sure. Okay, you get an S or you get a whatever. You get a good rating. When you go to maths, for example, right, everyone looks at it as just, oh, it's numbers. But maths is no different to computing. It's no different to physics. It's no different to chemistry. It's no different to... design and technology it's no different to electrical they're all exactly the same and uh, there's a, there's one reason behind it right biology as well is completely separate because uh, biology is just about knowledge remembering things all those other subjects that I mentioned it's just problem solving right you're you're asked to do a task right H here's math maths for example right what do you have to do in maths you have to try and get a solution, right? You have to try and get an answer. So, the whole objective of math is to do problem solving to work out exactly what instructions you need to do to get that result. Okay, sometimes, it, I wouldn't even say it's just numbers put in different contexts, but, but yeah, it, it can be seen in that way, but I think the easiest way to describe it is just, it's problem solving, right? You look at computer science, you're given a task, right, I need you to make a calculator, right? And you then do problem solving to put all these different instructions in a certain way to make it do a calculator, right? It's obviously a very bare bones basic way of putting it. But it's problem solving, right? You then have um, chemistry, right? You have to work out and do problem solving to work out how chemicals are going to interact with each other based on their protons, neutrons, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot more knowledge involved in that than, say, computer science or maths. But you still do problem solving. Right? And again, with electrical engineering, for example, or design and technology, you are doing problem solving to get a result. And maths especially. Problem solving to get a result. So why don't they teach and focus on helping kids get better at problem solving? But they don't. School is teaching stuff so wrong like I can, I can guarantee you if you were to focus on trying to get someone better at doing problem solving they'll get a million times better at math they'll get a million times better at computer science they'll get a million times better at everything else and there is a reason why you, people with ADHD who struggle they can typically struggle a lot with um, English and whatnot, but they're really good at math and there's a reason and computer science and chemistry and whatnot 
And there's a reason behind that. It's because it's fucking problem solving. And people with ADHD are good fucking problem solvers. Like, it, it's so straightforward. It's obvious. Obvious as hell. But unfortunately, people that put their feet up in governments and whatnot that run the education are completely out of touch. A lot of things that are run in this world are run by people who are completely out of touch with what they're trying to actually run. Memorize the equations, but I do better than the people who do logical reasoning and working out what to do with the numbers instead of using a set equation. Exactly. Like... All you have to do is just problem solve with math. It's problem solving. If you can problem solve, you're fine. Like, you've got a list of instructions here, a list of things to do. If you can solve it, you're good. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, you got it. But people will not see it that way. <laughs> Love baking bread memes. Oh, I gotta bake some bread. 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 By the way, uh, as well, so, even though Twitch seemed a little more, I wouldn't say a little more active, but Twitch, when I was streaming over there, I'd sort of get a lot more newer people. However, I'm, I'm seeing that on YouTube, my numbers are doing a lot better. Like, when you look at the analytics compared to, say, the Twitch streams that I used to do, the numbers are so much better. This is a good song from Falter. This is the intro song for Horizon 1, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I, I will agree with that. I think Twitch is a better viewing experience, but it, it's only a better viewing experience because people who use Twitch are used to that kind of experience. People that use YouTube are used to a video experience and they're not expecting live streams and whatnot. I think if you... I'll be honest, as a creator, YouTube is a million times more friendly. Right, because the, the difference... Okay, yeah, YouTube is a little complicated for someone who hasn't used it before. But if you look at it, it actually makes a lot of sense. Because I can sit, I can create a live stream, so I can create a thumbnail that can entice people into my stream. Twitch doesn't let you do that, it just shows you video preview as a thumbnail. And it'll update every two minutes or whatnot. Um... You can also set descriptions, you can have all your links and everything, so I don't need a bot. I can just say, the links are in the description that you need, and they are. They're there in the description, ready for you to use. And yeah, it's it's such a good experience to have. By the way, uh, for anyone here at the moment, I am thinking of doing a stream on Saturday in the morning. Uh, it's going to be a short Formula 1 stream. It's going to be F1 23. I'm going to play a bit of F1. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing a stream on Sunday. That will be more Forza Motorsport content. And then i got to edit on Monday. Like, I have to edit on Monday. <laughs> um, and then I believe next... 
Wednesday I might do another Forza stream. We'll see what happens. I'll be okay. But yeah, once you've created that YouTube page for your stream, uh, you can straight up just, you can click go live in OBS. You can start streaming to it, but there's a behind the scenes sort of page that has like analytics for that stream. It's got all individual stream keys. So again, every single stream that you set up has its own stream key. So it's safer as well. Twitch has one stream key and you can just go live with it whenever you want. So it's safer. Um, you've got all this information behind the scenes and then on top of that you can go live to the behind the scenes page you can see what the video looks like on YouTube's end but it doesn't start streaming until you click go live and then everyone can see it so you can check up on all these little bugbears and make sure that if there's any bugs or the stream software isn't working before you actually go live and on top of that, if there's an issue with the software, you can restart the stream and it still loads up. It's crazy. Uh, so this is Magello. This is this is a track that I think Gran Turismo should have. Hundred percent, because it's such a great circuit. Magello is my favourite track. In case anyone doesn't know, Magello is my favourite. Suzuka is second, and then um, my third favourite track. I probably have to say Sakuba because it's a nice short little one. This is a track everyone can. Yeah, exactly. People are going to keep asking for Magello because it's a good circuit. This is such a good track. I want this back in the Formula 1 calendar. They went here once for Formula 1. And it was one of the most exciting races there's ever been. Like, in terms of excitement, I've never seen a race more exciting than Magello. I watched it live. It was so good. I was in another country as well. It was su such a good race. You've got this long straight, which is great for overtaking, overtaking opportunities. You've then got a heavy braking zone. And then you've got multiple right hand left hand corners that you can do switchbacks or even just overtake people yeah I, some people think it's a mid tier track some people think it's an amazing track but I've not met anyone who said it's a terrible track I've not met anyone who said this is a terrible track it's a little bit like uh, the Red Bull Ring as well. I've not met anyone that said it's... Some people have said it's a mid-track. Some people have said it's amazing. But I've never met anyone that said it's a terrible track. But Magello is... Like this one here. 
like that with downforce is phenomenal. Doesn't Ferrari own this track? They do, yes. Ferrari, I believe, use it as a testing track. Um, but it, it is a bloody good track. Um, it, it's just exciting because of the fact that the corners... There are some really awesome corners. There's some high-speed sweeping corners, like that last one at the back. That corner on the other side of the track, that long sweeping one at the middle, uh, that was actually where Lance Stroll had his tyre blowout and crashed into the barrier when he was racing for a racing point. And that obviously brought out a red flag and that was one hell of a crash. But yeah, Magello, such an exciting track. It, in terms of probably Forza Motorsport, yeah, you'll end up drifting a fuck ton on this track because Forza handling just doesn't suit tight corners. It just doesn't suit it. Like, I can... See? There you go. Drifts again. But even when, uh, when I'm on Suzuka, for example, that track just drifts a lot in Forza. Suzuka is, is my second favourite track, though. Though, I will be honest, um, when it comes to the F1 game, I'm ri I didn't know what to think of the track when it first came out, but uh, Miami, the Miami track, around America, like, get rid of Circuit of the Americas, I think it's a terrible circuit, I'll be honest. But Miami, I really enjoy driving around that in F123. That is such a fun little track. It's so cool. Imagine Ferrari had a Formula Drift car. Ferrari would never get a Formula Drift car, only because of the fact that if they start making drift cars out of their cars, everyone would rip into them. Because they've built up this brat, this image that they're a really strict brand and they don't like customization of their cars to then go and make a formula drift car would they get screwed over big time i think it even i, I mean it depends if dead mouse is that petty but dead mouse would sue them and would have grounds to sue them if they were to just turn around and go yeah it's fine now because I think he lost quite a bit of money because of that um, Ferrari incident. Where he wrapped the Ferrari and changed the Ferrari. I won a league race on GC7 last night, which brought me from P2 to P1 in the stand-ins. It was a really fun race. Civic EK9 touring cars at one of the fictional circuits. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, I'm, I actually, um, what was that? I, I quite enjoy the Civic rally car that's in both Horizon 4 but also in Project Cars. I think it's quite a nice car to just chuck around. Uh, especially when you're in Project Cars, you've got VR and you're on the, like, the Dirt Fish rally cross track. That is so nice. It's one of the newer ones, so it's like the... It's not the hatchback Civics. Uh, it's the one where it almost looks like... Like a saloon car, but it's not. At the same time. I don't know why they made that Civic, to be fair. It's a really weird shape. 
Civics should always be hatchbacks. The Integra with a Civic badge. Yeah, exactly. Basically that. Oh, that's the race done. <laughs> I just looked at the lap counter. It said 32 out of 32. I was like, oh, shit. There we go. First place. We got 124 grand for that. And obviously max car level. So we got a load of discounts now on upgrades for BMW cars. Yeah, time flies. Though, to be fair, that has taken me about an hour and a half to do that race. Because I had the interruption in the middle of it. But, nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. Comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.